Father, thank you for the move of God. There is none like you. There's a sweet, sweet spirit that's roaming in the air. And it's something about the fragrance of the Holy Spirit. You can't get enough of it once you got some of it. And I'm here to testify that if you want to get the wrong, the wrongness of the Holy Spirit, the fragrance, you got to let something die. Thank you, God, for this opportunity. Thank you, God, for this preaching moment. Now, God, I need you to decrease Gary Dion Sampson and you standing in my body. You standing in my mind. Take over. It's yours. I'm just a vessel. Not worthy of it, but you saw fit to give it to me. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. You may be sitting in the presence of the Lord. I thank God for the angel of this house and the, the co-pastor of this house in the form of Melvin M. Maxwell and Sherry Ann Maxwell. Let's give God the praise. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Y'all can do better than that. Y'all can do better than that. I didn't say the Redskins. I didn't say the Cowboys. I didn't say the 49ers. I said the angel and the first lady of this house. And I got to acknowledge my other half of my family, the Lovitz, the Carringtons, please stand up. Beulah Lovett and the Carringtons. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. If you rest on your feet for a few minutes, I won't be long. John, the 12th chapter. Looking at the 24th verse if you have it say amen. amen and I thank God for Pastor Ford and Reverend Alexander and all the ministers of the gospel who share the weight of this burden that we care that we carry to the deacons the deaconess to this awesome music ministry. Amen. 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 Let's give God the praise. Amen. Amen. John chapter 12 verse 24 reads as such. You ready? Yeah. Verily, verily, I say unto you, a separate corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. It abideth alone. But if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It was a cold day in the DMV. The snow had invaded the area and roads were slick. It was about a year ago, and I was driving on 495 heading north with my daughters in the car, minding our own business, trying to get my girls to the rehearsal at the Metropolitan Baptist Church. We exited the Harry S. Truman Drive, and in a flash, we hit a slick spot. 
We went from driving carefully to viciously sliding off the road into the woods. In that moment, we thought that it was all over. We thought our life was no more. The question is, have you ever had a near-death experience where your life flashed right in front of your face? At a moment's notice, you thought it was over. Or have you had an encounter that made you wonder, would this lead to death? All of us here this morning have considered death as a possibility or an alternative. We think about death or the possibility of losing someone we love. I want to challenge you to just let some stuff go. And I want to let you know that if you let it go and are ready to take it to the next level, it's time to let it die. Come with me as we examine the text for the Lent season that we started last week. After a great, great miracles and great work, it was time of deep reflection. We have the Son of Man preparing for his departure. Jesus, the divine Logos knows what he has to do. He has to have a heart-to-heart conversation with his family. Can't you imagine the atmosphere at that moment? They had just finished a good meal. A little collard greens, candy yams, macaroni and cheese, a little lamb, a little wine to chase it down. Come on. Can I give it to you where you can reach it? Jesus was surrounded by his main apple scrapples. Lazarus, who he just rose from the dead. His two disciples, Philip and Andrew. And also Mr. Judas. Mm -hmm. Lazarus' two sisters, Mary and Martha. Can't you see it? Can't you imagine it? How it's going down? Just says, Jesus says to them, listen up. I got something to tell you. I don't know how to tell you this. Then one of the disciples interrupts him and yells out, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. What is it? Whatever it is, we'll understand. They go, they say, go where? One of the disciples said, go where? Jesus replies to them, I've done my duty. Now it's time for me to go so the prophecy can be fulfilled. The disciples say, Master, Master, we have so much to do. The insight Jesus was trying to give them was that he was preparing them for his own death. A transfer from the human to the divine. All the areas of of our lives and our lives today want to be where he was, where the disciples were. Can't you see it? All of us have a place in our life where we are willing to let some things die. So can it can rise. Many times in our life, we have the same attitudes that his disciples and his faithful crew had. Attitude, I can't believe this. I can't receive this. What in the world is this? Can this get any worse? Or better yet, the what if factor. What if 
I had to spend more time. What if? If I had taken the time, what if? What if? In this life, we find ourselves in battles that cause us to ask us these questions. The what if? Jesus says to them, I understand how you feel. I really do. I really do. But once you, once you, once you fail to realize is that it's already settled. It's already settled. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. There's no compromise. Just like when he was on the cross. One of his favorite slogans. It is finished. Then Jesus drops the revelation and says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, a of corn, a wheat fall into the ground and die. It abideth alone. But if it dies and bringeth much fruit, it's going to progress. What Jesus was trying to express to them, that he must die to be glorified. And to be glorified, unless he's glorified, he can't be magnified. And if he can't be magnified, the church can't establish a glorified church. He's telling them, you're going to have to let me go. Release me. I've done all what I came to do. You see me turn water into wine. You see me heal the paralytic. You see me deal with a woman with an issue. You see me deal with your nasty butt. It's time for me to go. As true believers, you and I must realize that as long as we live, these things are going to arise. In our life, we are challenged on every side of the coin. Just think how Jesus' family was thinking and feeling at that time. A major shift was getting ready to go down. And Jesus is trying to prepare them. Mm -hmm. Jesus knew that they were ready. But they did not know that they were ready. Has it ever been a time in your life major crisis has, has come? Come and go. And you knew it was coming and you still were not ready? The good news this morning is your father, which is in heaven, knew that you were not totally ready. But he gave the resources that you needed to get through it. Anybody glad this morning? God stepped in. God made a way out of no way. God was in the middle of your mess. God was a provider in the hard times and the good times and the not so times. Can't you see it? The amazing God, the wonderful God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the master of, of everything. He is ready to go. He's got his bags packed. He's got his one-way ticket. And he tells them, I'm leaving, but I'm going somewhere that you can't go. And they still Sat there in unbelief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it amazes me that we, when we know things we encountered could have been so easily avoided. Yeah. We know the messes we made in this life, we voluntarily did it. But something or someone told you that if you just try it one time, it's, it'll be okay? On, Question, what was that one time? Or that one thing. Was it gambling in the midnight hour? Was it getting high on the corners of DC? Was it getting your groove on at the hotel, motel, holiday inn? Was it manipulating someone 
to do what you want them to do, knowing that you didn't have no interest in them? What type of hand have you been dealt with on today? What type of hand you want to change? What's your hand? What's your hand? I understand that hand you were dealt with. It was not what you expected. But on today, I'm here to tell you today, mm -hmm, let it die. Let it die. Let it die. Let it die. Let that marinate for a minute. Let it die. 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 In today's text, Jesus draws us a picture of his death by comparing it to a corn or a kernel of wheat. He's saying, if it does not fall, in the ground and die, it will remain just a corn, a wheat in a farmer's hand all alone. How many times have you been in that situation that you, whenever you called on, you are alone. You are alone. You are alone. But if, you, if it is allowed you, but if it is allowed to fall, or the farmer let it go to fall into the ground, it will die. If it dies, it will bring forth much fruit, much more wheat. Just think about it. Jesus singles himself out from among so many thousands of seeds, almost to the point where he's, 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 he's separated himself. He's, he's all alone. He's all alone and everybody's behind him. Yeah. He's standing ready to go. Right. The flight, you see the flight coming in. He's at the gate. Mm -hmm. He's at the gate. He's at that gate. Are you ready to go to that gate? Thousands of seeds almost have to die, which therefore was exceeding properly stimulated. It stimulates. You got to think about the seed. It stimulates. And when it's in a, a, a situation, it's, when it's in an environment, it adapts. It has to adapt to the purpose of which he uses it. Like to be found in any other grain except a large bean. You got to understand that the seeds that he's talking about is what we need to let die. The, this parable is used by Jesus to teach them three things. Number one. He teaches them that he must die. Secondly, he shows them God is in control. Finally, he shows them that his death has a purpose. Jesus is saying, if you want to be, and be productive in my kingdom, you must die to yourself. Only when you do that, you will have the opportunity to be fruitful in my kingdom. Yeah. Moreover, you have me as an example. I was equal to God, but I did not count my equality something to be grasped and held onto. Rather, I emptied and died to myself by taking the form of a bond servant made in the likeness of men. In other words, I humble myself by becoming obedient to the Father, even though by doing so, I was writing my own death sentence. Let me, let me break this down where you can reach it. First here in the science behind it. The wheat grain as a seed is fitted for re reproducing the plant from which it came. The germ is an embryo plant. With a radical, which can grow into a root system. And the, pri and the primary, the plants, which can develop into stems, leaves, and ears. A pericarp is a tough skin. It's a tough skin which protects the inner seed from soil organisms, which makes it the inner seed coats and controls the intake of water by the seed. The endosperm sperm is the food that reserves on the young plant. Which causes it to live until it has developed a root system. Translation, the kernel of the wheat goes in the ground. 
And it has a few layers. The outside layer is considered a husk. And it has to die. The next layer also has to die. But within those death predicaments, a seed compartment that has tough skin and protects the seed from the organism that is in the dark soil set on the killed seed. In addition, there is a built-in water system that draws water from the soil and purifies it along with a food system and then feeds it until it takes root and suits its roots to grow into a new wheat system with much wheat grain on it. What I stopped by to tell somebody today that the troubles that you're going through, the trials that you're going through, the tribulations that you're going through, the treacherous experiences and events in your life that has a seed deep on the inside. And you just let it go and drop it from your life. It will be buried. And then eventually die in the darkness and it's reflects in its tents. It has, say that one more time. It has a deep sea on the inside. If you just let it go and drop it from your life, it will hit the ground and be buried. Then eventually die in darkness that reflects its evil intent. All the attacks of the enemy. That dark circumstances will not be able to penetrate the shield and grace of mercy that surround that sea. God converts the experience of evil and pain for your good because he planted a seed from within the crucified experience. Created a new root system that will produce a greater fruit in your life. The Bible says story after story. Story after story that the past was let go of these giants. Jacob was a hustler, a corn man that stole his brother's birthright. Blessing, but wrestled with God with him all night. God wrestled with Jacob all night, all day. But until he changed and came and wanted to let it go, yeah. that's when he changed. Yeah. He changed his name to Israel yes, and gave a new destiny. Yes, Moses was a murderer yes, and the prince in Pharaoh's court. Yeah. But he dropped the past and let it die. He took hold of his heritage and got religion. It became a deliverer to all his people, yes. guiding them to the promised land. Yeah. Samson was a judge who sold out his arrogance and a beautiful woman in the enemy's camp. He lost his vision. He lost his hair. He was put in a miry prison. But instead of hanging his head down low, he took and looked to the hills which come of his strength and gave him power to destroy the enemies at all times, all day, all night. Simon, Simon was a knife-willing disciple who denied Jesus three times yeah. and ran away into hiding. But Jesus declared that his name would be Peter and his testimony about Jesus, the rock God would build his church on. And he stood up on the day of Pentecost and preached the gospel. Saul murdered and arrested Christians and Caesar's decree and sought to do them great harm. But God knocked that evil past off, buried and let it die. Changed his name to Paul on the streets called Straight. And became one of the greatest disciples of all time who wrote most of the New Testaments. Can't you see it? I understand my brothers and my sisters. You're tired of coming up short. After time. After time. But time is not a bad thing. The Bible says that the Lord is a very present help in times like these. And you got to know that he will make a way out of no way. So you got to let it die so it can rise. Keep praising through your pain. Worshiping through your worries. Shouting through your sorrows. Rejoicing and running when no one is chasing you at that moment's notice. You got to get into a position of letting it go and letting God so it can die. As the people of God, you got to find yourself in a knee deep and sinking fast situation. 
And a guarantee, and you need a guaranteed lifeline. Yes. His name is Jesus. Yes. The author and finisher of your faith. Yes. Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice. So don't give up, no give in. Yes. At a moment's notice, the Lord will bring you through and just know. Let the past, the pains, the problems, and the evil predicaments die so it can rise in your marriage, so it can rise in your ministry, so it can rise in your parenting, so it can rise in your job, so it can rise in your relationship, so it can rise in your business, so it can rise in for, to fulfill a purpose and destiny that God called you to do. So let it die. God can't act on your behalf if you don't face it. And when you face it, you can get into his presence. It's all over. It's time to remember who you are and whose you are. Are you ready to kill it off? What the devil meant for evil? That God meant for good? Just think about the cross experiences and knew he was going to die. I said it earlier. He knew he was going to die. He was hanging between two criminals. One on the left and one on the right. Yeah. Mary's baby was in a dying moment. Yeah. And he knew with the nails in his feet, nails in his hand, crown on his head, knowing that if he did not do it, the prophecy will not, cannot be fulfilled. I understand, ma'am. I understand, sir, the crosses that you bear. Yeah. Jesus already bared it for you. Yeah. I understand that every seed that you may have in your life, uh -huh. in your hand, think about the seed. It's small in substance, but it's mighty in word. Yeah. I know that the seed that I need is the Lord Jesus Christ who suffered and bled and died on the cross for my sins. And I understand that every road that you go on might be bumpy, might be tough, might be rough, but you know what? You got to let it die. I understand that about the 495 experience. And sometimes in your life, when you go to the roads of a mess, you got to understand that you're going to deal with some slick moments. You're going to deal with some rough moments. You ain't going to go sliding into the woods. But guess what? Just like he was in, just like he was in, just like he was in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, angels surround him. And you got to understand that that moment right there when he came out, he came out anew. He said, look at my hands. They see me new. Look at my feet. They are too. You got to understand that you got to let it die so you can be delivered, so you can have the ultimate sacrifice. And the ultimate sacrifice is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I understand that nobody can do what the Jesus can do. Because the Jesus in me, let the Jesus in you have I got a witness. Let me close. Let me close as we're rising to our feet. Let me close. I want to be honorable to the time. Amen. There's a story about a young, young lady one day was speeding through a small Georgia town. She was traveling 70 miles in a 55 mile hour zone. The police pulled her over and wrote her a ticket that would cost her $100. She didn't have the money to pay and ended up having to go to court over the ticket. In the courtroom, the judge said, you are found guilty of going 70 miles in a 55 mile hour zone. You have to pay the $100. The young lady said, I'm guilty, but I can't pay. I don't have the $100. Well, don't pay the ticket. We have to lock you up for the weekend. 
I can't pay. The lady said, I can't pay, Your Honor. I can't pay the ticket, but I don't want to go to jail. She was trying to compromise what she had to do. Can you please just have mercy on me? Have mercy me on Judge Your Honorship. The judge, of matter of fact, replied, I can't change the law. The law says that you've got to pay the $100 or you're going to spend the weekend in jail. Those are the rules. And I can't change the rules. The lady said, started to tear up and spoke in a small voice. Isn't there something you can do? I can't pay it, but I don't want to go to jail and get locked up. Have mercy on me. The judge looked down at her and pushed his chair back from the bench. Zipped down his robe and took it off. He went over to the side and picked up his jacket and put it on. He walked down and stood beside the girl and reached, his, reached into his wallet and bought out a $100 bill. He put the $100 bill on the bench and took off his jacket. Then went over and picked up his robe. He zipped his robe up and got back on the bench. Young lady, you've been found guilty of, of 70 miles in a, in a 50 mile mile hour zone. The law is, is the law. I can't change it. The law says you must pay 100 or spend the weekend in jail. Oh, but, I, but I see somebody else has already paid the debt. Got some. A, God saw us speeding down the highway of sin. He zipped down the independent use of his deity and put on the jacket of humanity. He came down and died on the cross and paid the price that you, you and I could not pay. He picked up the tab, rose, rose from dead, zipped on the glorified body and extended up to heaven. The good news on the gospel is that the bill was paid. And then, isn't that right? Isn't that right? Isn't that right? So the bill that was paid is the good news. Is that your question this morning? Is that your problem? You can't pay a bill? But I'm just glad to hear to say that you have a doctor, a lawyer in the courtroom that's going to pay the debt for you. And a hundred dollars was paid. So I'm just here to say that you got to let it go and let it die so we can arise. Is anybody glad about it? 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 Is there anybody willing to die for something that we must arise? The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. There's someone that needs something to die. What is it? Brokenness? Unforgiveness? That tongue? The eye factor? That sickness? What is it on today? If I shoot, come on down. Give the preacher your hand and guide your heart. Because he's the best heart fixer I know. Is there one? Is there one? Or better yet, you need to, you need, you need, you need a church home. You need a church home. You need a church home. That can be that you can get bad at, that you can move to a next level. Is that is that you? 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 As the choir ministers. You clean me up inside. You thought I was to die for. You died for you. So you sacrificed your life so I can be free. So I can be whole. Yes. So I can tell everyone I know you thought I was worth saving. Is that your question this morning? So you came and 
changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You clean, so you clean me up inside. You thought I was to die for. Yeah. So you sacrifice you your sacrifice. life. So I can be free, yeah. so I can be whole, so I can tell everyone I know. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, let's sing glory. Let's wash up. Let's wash up. To the God who changed. So I will praise you forever, forever. Forever, forever, so I can be free, so I can be whole, so I can tell everyone I know.